Okay, so uh, this is a supplement to my lecture at the Simons Institute about uh, why quantum computers cannot work. And I want to mention, to discuss a little bit, uh, the topic of uh, topological quantum computing that uh, I didn't discuss uh, uh, in the original lecture. And the uh, topological quantum uh, computing is a beautiful idea. It's a, it's a beautiful idea, and uh, the idea is to use ordinary experimental processes uh, to construct highly uh, stable qubits based on the uh, non-abelian anions and related uh, objects, and to perform logical operation on these qubits. So, for example, uh, the first paper by uh, or why the, the hero of this subject is uh, is Kitaev, and the, in a paper by Friedman, Kitaev, Larsen, and Wang, they point out that the error rate uh, for topological quantum computing scale like e to the minus alpha l, where uh, alpha is some constant and l is the length scale, and uh, this, th they compare it to, to qubit models that repair errors combinatorically and that require fantastically low error rate. And they, although by now the f this fantastically low error rates were pushed up, it's still a, a very appealing and beautiful idea. Now the case for why uh, topological quantum computers cannot work is uh, stronger than the case for one for why uh, ordinary uh, uh, qubit gates quantum computers cannot work. And it is based on uh, the most basic idea of theoretical computer science, which is uh, <coughs> the idea of uh, reduction. So let's, uh, let's consider, let's consider uh, some suggestion for, quantum, for topological quantum compu computers or some, some building block. You have uh, two anions, which are certain quasi-particles, and these two anions describe a qubit. And uh, one, when you push, the, when you push these uh, two anions apart, then this qubit, you can prove that this qubit become uh, more and more stable. And, uh, and there are uh, similar ideas based on four particles that uh, you allow to, to de de describe a Hilbert space based on, on the way four particles are, the geometry of, uh, the planar geometry of four particles. And those are very uh, beautiful objects. Now, what's uh, wrong with this, uh, with this idea? Uh, so now let's uh, let's try to see let's try to see what happens what happens with these experiments that implement uh, such a such a, a anion. So we will uh, look at this uh, anion on the left, and here we consider a hypothetical a quantum computer computer that uh, describe the, on some uh, microscopic level, the experiment that leads to this anion. They describe the creation of this anion. Now, this hypothetical quantum computer is a noisy quantum computer, of course. And for all we know, these experimental processes, they don't invoke any quantum fault tolerance. And this means that uh, the way these anions will behave will, will, can be described by the evolution of a noisy quantum computer without quantum fault tolerance that doesn't enact quantum fault tolerance. <coughs> and we know, I think we understand quite well, that when we don't enact quantum fault tolerance, these qubits, there will be a substantial probability for logical error for this qubit. Namely, the state of this qubit will not be a delta function in the Bloch sphere, in the Bloch sphere, but rather some cloud in the Bloch sphere. So this is the argument uh, uh, regarding quantum, uh, topological quantum computing. And <coughs> you know, uh, uh, two weeks ago, there was the winter school here. Uh, uh, John Peskill described me this idea about four, four <coughs> particles. And uh, I mentioned to him this, uh, this uh, argument, and he correctly pointed out that this argument also applies for uh, the Martinez effort that we described in the lecture for creating a superconducting 
a stable logical qubit. There we do use the more traditional qubit structure, but still there is some shortcut because uh, in this uh, uh, efforts by Martini, by the IBM group that put forward by several theoreticians, uh, in this project uh, we don't create the logical qubit via the full uh, process of uh, quantum computing. There are some physical shortcuts. And these physical shortcuts are, so will lead to non-stable qubits uh, precisely by the same argument. And this argument is fairly powerful. It also applies to several situations of uh, uh, adiabatic computation and other cases. Now, uh, finally, I want to move to talk about a related but somewhat different a topic which is how geometry enters the picture. <coughs> and uh, uh, you know my models uh, are geometry free and uh, the main reason for it is mathematical ele elegance. The ordinary noise models involve no geomet geometry, the quantum computer model involves no geometry and I didn't think uh, that it would be correct to involve geometry in the alternative models and also, when it comes to quantum computers, since you can Im implement uh, gates which apply to two qubits in complicated ways in three space, uh, it's not clear that the spatial geometry uh, give a, a, a real restriction. But when, when we can ask ourselves, uh, is condensed matter physics demonstrate uh, computationally superior quantum computing and or high energy physics? And for the, those questions, the geometry plays a, a, a more important role. And let me make some comments about it. I, I should say that, uh, as I said uh, in, the ma in the lecture, uh, quantum fault tolerance breaks the connection between quantum evolution, geometry, and time. So another way to say it is that the failure of quantum fault tolerance is precisely what enables time and geometry to emerge in our physical world. So let me uh, mention, make some comments which were inspired by a talk given here by Frank, by Frank Westreit and they are also related to some works that he described by several people uh, including also uh, Mate Hesting. And uh, the pic uh, uh, Frank d described uh, two dim one, two and three dimensional uh, lattice models and he drew a very appealing picture that I want to to draw to you now, and uh, Frank's picture described uh, the world of, of quantum states, uh, this huge Hilbert dimension, Hilbert space of quantum states, and then there are some areas which represent different phases of matters. And uh, the way uh, to describe these phases of matter, there are uh, two, two uh, equivalent ways. Uh, one is by gapped evolution, so ga equivalent classes uh, v uh, for gapped evolutions with uh, local terms, local terms, and here when we say local we mean ge geometrically local terms, and the equivalent uh, description w where the equivalence is not, I wouldn't say it's a mathematical theorem, but it, it, it is based on much uh, research, a uh, is low depth, low depth computation. And here, because of geom geometric restriction, uh, the the low depth, the meaning of low depth is, is much more firm than when we talk about abstract models. So the equivalent class with respect to gapped evolution with local terms uh, are also described with, with respect to low depth uh, computation, and these equivalent classes are called phases of matter. Now, here, uh, this picture leads to the following, uh, to the following uh, uh, three insights. So the first is that new phases of methods require genuine or deep quantum computing. This is the first. Uh, the second is that deep quantum computing 
quantum computing requires quantum error correction. Error correction. And the third insight is that quantum quantum error correction requires um, new phases of matter. So what you see here is that you have a sort of a vicious circle that in order to achieve new phases of matters in this huge Hilbert space, you require quantum computing. To achieve quantum computing, you require error correction. And to achieve error correction, you require new phases of matters. And this, give a, this suggests that at least when we talk about the Hilbert space of, of a, a pure, pure evolution or approximately pure evolutions, we cannot achieve a deep quantum or demonstrate deep quantum computing in, a, in ordinary physics, in condensed matter physics, at least in the context of this, uh, of this uh, uh, experiment. Uh, of course, uh, the situation, we, the, there are more to say about this situation. And I think one sort of solution is to enlarge the silver space further and to talk to talk about mixed, mixed uh, or noisy quantum evolutions. And when we move the entropy up, then a lot of interesting things can happen. In particular, the, we will have a new phase of, of uh, matters, or seemingly new phase of matters, which, uh, which do not require deep computing. Deep computing will still require, require new phase of matter on the pure level. But when we move to deep, to mixed uh, evolution, then uh, I think this, the picture will be interesting and beautiful. And we will have at least seemingly new phases of matters which, uh, which occur without, uh, which out, uh, without uh, deep uh, quantum computing. <coughs> so I think uh, this is uh, quite an interesting question, worth of further study. And uh, let me just end with one fascinating question is, uh, to relay this gapped uh, evolution with local term or noisy gapped, noisy gapped evolution with, with local terms, to how do they relate with my model of smooth Lindblad evolution? Lindblad evolution. So the smoothly my evolution do not uh, uh, are, are non geometric models; they are abstract models, and it will be interesting. To, to see if gapped, noisy gapped uh, evolution with local terms can be uh, described by smooth Lindman evolution, what is the, the smoothing law, and, and so on. OK, so let me finish by some philosophical remark, which is that uh, quantum computers are uh, larger than life. And uh, quantum computers may well add to our long list of failures in larger than life human quests. And you know, mathematically speaking, having larger than life dreams and so often in disappointment demonstrates how large how large life itself is. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>